Islam, Peace, Hotep. We're here. Um, they, have a, they have a little class. They have a class going on right now. So we're, um, we're coming from a different location until we get, um, until they finish their piano class out there. And we'll get back to our regular, our regular meeting spot. Um, so as we, as we, as usual, you know, we'll start up with getting our little, our little bills out the way, right? Um, first thing, Marsh Divine and National Movement presents, we are a nation, the National Census and Registration Drive, the National Mall, Washington, D.C., October 20th, 2013, confirmed. Centennial Commemoration, 100 Years of Morris Science, 1913 to 2013. For more information, you can get at the Centennial Director, L. Austin Bay, day number 202-696-0088, and evening number 202-725-2686. M. Kirkland L. 301-852-4597 uh, National Grand Sheet Kenny Umar Bay Divine Minister 312-888-5486 As well Grand Governor Divine Minister Jabbar Gaines Ill 260-241-4086 and B. Graham Bay, 410-935-9846, right? So keep in mind the We Are a Nation National Census Registration Drive for the Moorish Nation, all right? That's going on. Next on the list, this Sunday, uh, June 2nd, 4 p.m. at the Moore Science Temple of America Lecture Hall, 1704 Eglinton Avenue West. We have um, a lecture by not by Grand Sheik Nature L. Bay. The lecture is entitled National Standards. So that's going to be this Sunday. All the Moors that are in Canaan land, you already know where we're at. You can make your appearance, right? 1704 Eglinton Avenue West. Um, the, the, the admission amount changed to ten dollars, so omit the 20, 20 debt notes. It's gonna be ten debt notes for the for the lecture, right? And again, that's National Grand um, that's Grand Chic, excuse me, that's Grand Chic Nature LB lecture this weekend. Alright. Now um just got off Facebook and I got this message right here floating around. Um, there's Moors up north who say they are grand sheep but scared to travel. Run temple like it's a church and pass the plate around, look in Moors pockets, work for the government, lol, and want to slander real Moors. This is too funny. Mans use other Moors to use their old plates and use them like, rat, like lab rats and shields don't use their national title in any official capacity with the de facto when you ask them about it they will turn around and call you a nigger or agent i'm ready to pull his house niggers skirt up so i'm the house nigger that this more um you might know him on facebook as love truth peace freedom justice or cosmos ether lb right so this more let's just um put this on the record um, as Grand Sheik right I've already filed with the Mufti department his removal from office same way that Emilio Il did with Kirtman Bay and you see the pattern of what happened right when Emilio Il filed the removal from office letter right for Kirtman Bay what happened Kirtman Bay went behind his back and started doing crap talking that he's grand moderator and all that stuff right same position right history repeats itself remember history repeats itself right 
so this agent that was removed from office we're not going to take too long on this because we got work to do today right but we're, we're going to do we're going to do uh uh um well not even we i'm going to do uh canaan land moors dirty moors class and we're going to expose all these niggers that's coming into the temple fronting like they're down with the temple picking up books and stuff like we don't have eyes and stuff like that like we don't count the inventory picking up dvds leaving not paying for stuff all these niggers are gonna get called out in the Canaan Land Moors Dirty Moors class. That's probably gonna be next week, Tuesday. All right. So be prepared for expose next week. All right. By Grand Sheik Kudrado L. Because this has gone, this has gone way beyond where it was even supposed to go. Because again, like I said, his removal from office affidavit. Has already been filed with the Mufti department. The Mufti has been put on notice, notice that this Moor that used to be the head of the jurisprudence department has been removed from office. And just like Kirkman Bay, when Emily Ill removed Kirkman Bay from office, this Moor continues to slander, right? Um, you know making erroneous claims that grand sheik is scared to travel right so let, let's touch on a couple of these things in here right um so first issue grand sheik scared to travel all right first of all with regard to this joker by the name of cosmos ether l bay right it's not for oh, damn boy you got it <laughs> glad you're here boy <laughs> with regard to this joker Cosmos Ether L Bay. Um, the only reason he's on more science is because I put him on. Right? Kudro Adwo L put him on to more science. Right? He was just another more out there, you know, wondering about this or whatever. But who put him on the straight and narrow? Kudro Adwo L. And what do I get in return? Backbiting. Right? What do I get in return? 70 text messages a day slandering me calling me dirty more calling me um pastor you know i'm running the temple like a pastor i chase people out the temple my attitude i work for the government i'm always looking in more pockets what else you have in here um you know um man's using other moors to use their old plates and use them like lab rats and shields and don't use their national title in any official capacity with de facto if you studied, you would know that you can't use your official capacity with de facto because they're de facto. Jackass. Right? What, what's going on, sir? Oh, yeah, this one came today. That was just on, that was just on Facebook. So I just had, oh, yeah, you can pull that. Sorry. Right. It's all good. Right? So we're going to do a Canaan Land Moors Dirty Moors class. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the history of Dirty Moors in Canaan Land before we were even Moor Science Temple. So you can know that it's dirty moors that made the marcus garvey center fall that that we had a marcus garvey center out here if you didn't know we'll put that on the record there used to be a marcus garvey center in canaan land right that these niggers got from the the government for one dollar big ass building like like big ass building we could have a school in there university in there we could have everything in there guess what these niggers that call themselves Garveyites are up in the up in the um, Marcus Garvey Center for Leadership and Education. The sign outside, Marcus Garvey Center for Leadership and Education, drinking beer, playing dominoes. Right, that's what they were doing with the Marcus Garvey Center. That's the type of people that we have in this jurisdiction. You guys think you got dirty moors where you're at? Canaan Land got dirty moors, right? Caribbean Resource Center, right? Again, all this is before we were even more science, before we were even on, we were just on black stuff, right? We brought Professor Griff here. We brought Black Dot here. We brought Alimel Bay here. We brought Queen Mother Imaku, Brother Lasani here. We brought Boyd Graves here. We brought Sister Zakina here. We brought Bobby Hemet here. We brought Rudra here. We brought Autumn Ashanti and Bettina Shanti here. We brought... 
um, Booker T. Coleman here. We bought Jose Pimenta Bay here. You name it, we brought him here. Right? So I'm not talking out my ass. I'm talking based on what I know personally I was involved in out here. And personally, I know that people in the jurisdiction of Toronto, right, that call yourself, you know, for the community or whatever, are full of shit. They're full of bullshit. All they want to do is get grants. They don't want to go into their pocket, into their 401k, liquidate that and help the community, right? They don't want to do that, right? They want to get government grants and say that they're for the community. Well, don't worry. Next week, we're doing the Canaan Land Moors, Dirty Moors, and we're going to expose all these frauds out here. We're drawing the line right now because the line has to be drawn, right? Because I didn't sacrifice, right? Mufti didn't sacrifice. All these true and faithful Moors in Canaan Land, right? Sacrifice in order to have you know, some joker, bipolar, bitch-ass nigger, right, with a fez on, try to dismantle the movement. You're not dismantling what Noble Drew Ali and Allah set up in Canaan land. It's not happening, right? And I really hope that you see this so you know, because 70 text messages a day is, that's beyond harassment, Right? And all you're doing is texting me bullshit. And the only reason that you're texting me is because Mufti, right, who's probably going to get down on it because he knows some dirty mores in Canaan Line too that need to get exposed. Mufti was in the washroom, right? And he heard this dirty more, right, telling another more in the temple, right, who doesn't have a job, He's telling that more who doesn't have a job that he has to pay for photocopies. Right? This dirty more, Cosmos Ether L. Bay, Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, Justice is his name on Facebook. He has two Facebooks, right? Cosmos Ether L. Bay and Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, Justice, right? These two, these two names are on Facebook. That's the guy that I'm talking about right now bitch ass nigger right he was trying to tell another more who he knows doesn't have a job right that he has to pay for some papers that he was photocopying because you know he's the one that put the papers together so he has to make sure that he pays for it when we've been telling him pay dues and he's not even paying dues but then he's gonna turn around and tell somebody else pay for something when he's not even paying so mufti was in the washroom heard him and Mufti came out to Washington and told me, oh, you're full of bullshit, right? And he yelled at him, this was at our temple. right? This was at the temple, when right? Was this? this was this was about two months ago. At that temple? Yeah, at the temple right now where we're at, 1704 Eglinton. He was in there, this Cosmos guy? Yeah, he, he, Abdullah. Abdullah oh, Al-Bay. Wow. Yeah, Abdullah al -Bay. We'll Let's put see. his name out there since you're asking. So Abdullah al -Bay, right? So he got caught in some, in some dumb shit. Mufti called him on it. And he got mad and he said he's not coming back to the temple. He's sending me texts that our Mufti's a fraud. Our Mufti doesn't have any authority. Forget that guy. I'm not, you know, the only jurisdiction, the only authority that's on me is the authority of Allah and the Prophet and all this bullshit, right? So, last night, right? Last night, this is just last night, right? It's funny that everything happens how it's supposed to happen, right? Last night, He's calling me down. Now, Now, since that incident, he never called me. Never called me once. All of a sudden, last night, he's calling me down, calling me down, texting me. Yo, why aren't you answering the phone? Why aren't you answering the phone? You should answer the phone. If you're if you're man enough, you answer the phone. Mind you, he hasn't been to the temple either in, in the past two months. And we have classes every single Sunday, and he could have came to the temple. If he had an issue, he could have came to the temple and came and talked and whatever, do whatever, right? But he didn't do that. He's going to stick to, you know, using his girlfriend, his online Facebook girlfriend, Spesh7, whatever the hell her name is, right? Using her page, right? Talking through her page to make people think that 
that you know that's her talking when you know when people speak there's a frequency in your language so i know that's not her i know this is you posting up all this crap right and again next week right next week class is going to be canaan land moors dirty moors class and we're going to expose all the dirty moors ever since i came into consciousness in 1996 we're going to expose all the dirty moors from 1996 to 2013 right that have lied to the people killed people killed people there's people that are around today walking around that they literally kill people who were sincere people trying to help the community right that's the type of dirty mores that we're dealing with in canaan land if you if you think that it's a joke up here right people died people died because of dirty mores agents people got deported sincere people got told on right very sincere people people who wouldn't hurt a fly got told on by these agents and got deported out of the, out of the country because of dirty niggers and then people get mad why I talk how I talk because I've been in this I keep telling people I'm not new to this right I'm not new to this I've been in, I've seen this community grow so-called conscious community black negro african community i was part of it i seen it and it's real funny that as soon as we get on more science right we're public enemy number one to all these people who they used to people who came to bobby hem electro when we brought him here i haven't seen them since we've been on more science people who came to batina shanti and autumn ashanti lecture that we did here i haven't seen them since we got on more science People who came to Professor Griff, I haven't seen them since we got on more science. People who came to all the Black Dot lectures that we did. We brought Black Dot here three times. We even brought Black Dot here one time so we can sell his books at a, fe at a fest here that we have here called AfroFest. Like we brought him here for that. Not even to do a lecture. We just brought him here just to come vend at the lecture. Come vend at the, at the, at the event. You go ask him. Go on Facebook, send him a message, go ask all of them, right? Booker T. Coleman, Kabahara Watha Kameen, we brought him here. Uh, there's people who came to that. Ever since we got on more science, all these people are MIA. So we're public enemy number one, just so everybody out there knows, right? And this is why I talk with mainly Moors outside of the jurisdiction here. It's mainly Moors outside the jurisdiction here that call me. The Moors here that call me are new Moors that never heard about this before and they're trying to get down with the movement because they've been doing their own studying for the past three, four years and, you know, they're excited that there's a temple here. But people who've been, been here, been in the conscious community or whatever, you know, there's a select few that come around, but majority... 60 70 percent of the people in the conscious community we're public enemy number one to those people why because when we get down when we start talking about more science and you know the position of the moors that means no more handouts from slave master right handouts have to stop you have to be responsible and take care of your own community but they don't want to give that up right they're not giving that up they're going to play the game that they can get checks from the slave master and then talk shit about the slave master and think that they're doing something. All you niggers getting exposed next week. All right? So we're going to get that out because I got that out of my system. And it ain't done yet. Right? It ain't done because we're probably going to talk a little bit more about it on Sunday when we deal with the national standards with the Grand Sheep Nature Lecture. Right? And secondly... All the master teachers, you know, I already talked to Brother Olimbe, I already talked to Brother Taj, Sister Raz, Sister Anaid, Brother Fonteus, um, Brother Jabbar, um, Sheikas Nika, you know, all, all the Moors that we consider, you know, top priority. We already talked to those Moors, and all those Moors are backing us 100%, right? All those moors are backing us 100%.
so let's get down today today's class is black Indians and black Wall Street right and the frequency today is going to be very high energy because you know when when you get when when this when there's repetitive um slander and people are telling you you know you should just humble leave it alone don't worry about it or whatever you know what i mean and the slander still continues even though you're trying to humble and cool yourself or whatever you know sometimes you have to draw shimitars so we're drawing shimitars and all you black agents out there today that like to call us black indians and like to say that there's a black wall street crap don't listen to none of those agents anybody that comes to you talking to you about black about black Indians don't listen to them anybody come and tell you about black history don't listen to them anybody come to tell you about black anything discard what they're saying and go back to Noble Juali and what he said that you're not Negro black colored you're Moors right so we already know the definition of black so we're not even gonna go there we already know black means pale so all these pale people pale history people pale Indians pale Wall Street and all that throw that out the window because that has nothing to do with us right Indian inhabitant of India or South Asia applied to the native inhabitants of the Americas from at least 1553 on the mistaken notion that America was the eastern end of Asia right so the only reason these people are called Indian is by mistake and if it's a mistake that means it's not real so throw that out the window and get that out of the way. So forget the Indian crap, forget the black crap, right? I don't think you realize that the reason why they continue that on is to help propagate the falsehood behind this, right? Because right. If, they're, if, if, they're, if, they're, if they're then calling the Indian the indigenous to here, and he has no claim to here, then they, then they can make themselves just as much... The claimant. The claimant. Exactly. Right? Because what, take they've over. Done, what they've done is they've taken out the true heir to the land. Exactly. And made someone else the claimant. So you would have to then wade through that garbage first. Right. right? So, so black and Indian are misnomers that were placed on the Moors. Because there's no... All these, these you know, in, uh, Tonto and, uh, and all that stuff. You know, Brave Star and all that. That's not... There are no Indians. They're not no indigenous people to this landmass, right? They're not indigenous to this landmass, right? Next definition, slave, etymology again, right? Slave, S-L-A-V-E, Indian tribe of Northwestern Canada, 1789, from slave, noun, translating Cree, Algonquin, Awakan, captive or slave right so when they say now this is how how dumb this is how stupid this is how ignorant so-called negro black color people are right they say that they're slaves from africa right slave is an indian tribe of northwestern canada so if a slave is an indian tribe of northwestern canada right algonquian right and we know we know the algonquian and the iroquois are two federations of moors making up cree ojibwe cherokee blah 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 going down the line seminole whatever right algonquian and iroquois are confederations those aren't tribes of indians those are confederations of indians right a slave is an indian tribe of northwestern Canada now you know why Harriet Tubman said follow the North Star and come to Canada to escape so-called slavery because she was technically saying you're Indian go back home that was the message but they didn't get the message they want to play black games and they want to keep you know making this making this um um fraud right so then people are going to be posting up crap like this right name the country built on the genocide of one race 
and the enslavement of another. And then they show you this picture. Right? Right? Black people. Ignorant black people. Showing a brother and then showing an Indian half and half and saying that one of them got enslaved and then one of them got wiped out when both of them are still here today and you could see that they're still here in us because we're the Indian and we're the so-called slave because they're one and the same people think about this picture the native of this land and the slave that came from Africa are one and the same people right and we're gonna prove that today that there's not no separation between the so-called Aboriginal people, indigenous people of the land, and the so-called Negro Africans, slaves that came over here on slave ships that never existed. Right? Colonial America. The earliest record of African and Native American contact occurred in April 1502. When the first enslaved African arrived in Hispanola, some escaped England inland on Santo Domingo. Those who survived and joined with the natives became the first circle of black Native Americans. Right? There's the fraud again. Every time you read your history and you see black attached to anything, throw it in the garbage and identify yourself as who you are, Mars. Because as soon as you attach black, or Indian, like we said earlier, those two are misnomers. So as soon as you see black and Indian, you already know that that's a fraud. Get rid of it. What they're doing is taking your nationality away right? from you. They're denationalizing you. And they're denationalizing you through your consent because you think you're black Indians. Because you're listening to this idiot. Um, What's the guy's name? The guy out there who did the... The, 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 the testing on all the black people to see if you know who has the genes of indigenous people right, and who right, has right, the right. genes of whatever Compton, and that uh, right Carlton or something I can't remember he was in the class sell out sell out Negro yeah. right all these Negroes denationalizing you and then we're upholding these Negroes that's denationalizing us right not knowing that denationalization is an international war crime and these people are supposed to get put on a wall and get stoned to death for denationalization but we don't want to do that we want to be friends with sellouts we want to be friends with agents right it's not about being friends with agents because nobody really told you that your own brother is going to sell you into slavery be careful right in june of that year or oh, in addition the first example of African slaves escaping from European colonists and being absorbed by Native Americans was recorded in 1526. Now, why is Native, why are Native Americans, so-called, going to see a runaway slave and absorb them into Native tribes if those people didn't look just like the Natives? Right? Like, it's common sense why you think these people are just going to see you know like and again it comes back to our concept our concept is natives are red people or the people that we see around there today right. and we and, and just like when we talk about you know well, well how did we get in this land first if we didn't come over here on slave ships how about there was no atlantic ocean that's how we got in this land first because we just walked over here just like queen of sheba had her caravan or whatever and came over here because the land was one land mass right or even if you go back far enough, you realize that we were the first navigators, so we were, so, we were so on our own ships. So we were still coming over here on our own ships and on our well, own. Well, right? before, well yeah. before anything called slavery, right? That's why Aline Bay made the comment that, yeah, we come from Africa, but it wasn't no 400 years ago. That's right. We came from Africa tens of thousands, tens of, thousands of years ago. We were, we were coming over here into this landmass, right? In South Carolina, colonists were so concerned about the possible threat posed by the mixed African and Native American population that was arising due to runaways that they passed a new law in 1725. This law stipulated a fine of 200 pounds 
for persons bringing a slave to the foreign frontier regions. In 1751, South Carolina passed the law against holding Africans in proximity to Native Americans. So why are they going to now think about this, right? They're going to pass a law saying that it's against the law to keep Africans, right, near so-called so so Native Americans. Why are they doing this? They're doing this just because they're bored? They're doing this because they're trying to separate slaves from escaping the plantation? No, they're doing this to denationalize the people. To get the people not knowing who their brothers and sisters are. Mm -hmm. To get the people thinking that, that they're separate. When they're the same people, one and the same. The, when we're talking about 1751, 1725... 1622, 1526, be clear, be very, 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 very absolutely clear in your mind that the image of Native Americans, so-called, during that time looked just like me, just like Noble Juali, just like you. There was no so-called red man during those times. He didn't, like, he wasn't even, he wasn't even on the planet yet. The red man is new. That's a new amalgamation of more on the planet they are very new right they maybe have 200 years on the planet they're, they're they're younger than the european because everybody that was considered native aboriginal indigenous before the 1700s was dark-skinned big nose big lip people right in 1763, drew during Chief Pontiac's uprising, right? And then keep in, keep in mind, right? They always want to say that they killed Indians and uh, you know, they got all the Indians out the way or whatever, but then they use the Indian name still, right? Right? Chief Pontiac. Pontiac's a, a car. Pontiac's name on a car. Okay, Pontiac's an indigenous word. How is a car company going to use an indigenous word? Oh, well, they are in the Americas, right? That is a, that is a corporation right. from this hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So the name that they have to use is going to have to be Aboriginal. Mm -hmm. In order for them to have the power to do what they do. Mm -hmm. They can't do anything under European names over here. Of course not. Then the fraud will be because the fraud is going to be exposed. So what they've done is they've then put on, they implemented foreign another foreign race or another foreign sect into this jurisdiction pretended that they're the ones whose land it was and then using our original indigenous names and place the place it on them right and then and then taking taking ownership of that they've taken ownership of that because that was their fraud that they built from the, anyway from the be, from the beginning from the beginning right but using our names but using our names because instead. they have to use that still right. because that's no, the tie to the land right no different than the corporation of you know um the corporation of canada canada is an indigenous name that's right right even pre canada names are indigenous names canadigua cananta right? right all these names are indigenous names right Toronto is an indigenous name. The thing is that the fraud would be that much quickly, more quickly exposed if they were using, let's say, they were saying it was Italy, Italy, or or, or uh, France. Yeah, you you would automatically know that. Hold on a second. Why why is there Italy in? That's right. Canada. That's right. You know. That's the same. Goes why is there a Greece in Canada? That's what the same goes for all the names right. as well. Right. And then when you check the pattern. You go check the exotic map of the United States of America that's in King Alfred plan and you see Egypt on there uh, and M Morocco, Morocco and, Mecca. and Mecca and all of these names over here. Tripoli, Tunisia. Right? Tripoli, Tunisia. Like, so why are these, why are those so-called names said to be, well, those are African names, but they're over here. What are those names doing over here? If not that those continents were one landmass at one time, so obviously the places are going to have the same names that's why and that's why there's pyramids here and there's pyramids in china and there's pyramids in the south and not just on the continent 
because this land has always been inhabited by dark-skinned people who are the founders of civilization. And the founders of civilization always leave their mark. Hands down. You, you, you're not gonna get you're not gonna go somewhere right well, and civil, civilization I think speaks to the fact that they have created something right in a sense right right they have, they have made something that's what civilization I think denotes to begin with right so there would have to be proof of them right right okay um, so in 1763 during chief Pontiac's uprising a Detroit resident reported that Native Americans killed whites but were saying were but were saving the and caressing all the Negroes they take. Right? He worried less that might produce an insurrection. Chief Joseph Brandt Mohawk in New York welcomed runaway slaves and encouraged adoption of them into tribes and intermarriage. Keep in mind, Joseph Brandt, he sold out later. He might have been doing that in New York, but by the time Joseph Brandt came to Canada, he had slaves. That's in Canadian history. Now go research Joseph Brandt, J-O-S-E-P-H-B-R-N-T, and then, you know, also ask yourself the question, why is the chief of a Mohawk tribe named Brandt? Hmm. Obviously, you sold out. Mm -hmm. Where's your indigenous name? Right and remember, and again, he was down with all these so-called first um, prime ministers of Upper Canada and Lower Canada that had slaves and all that. Mm -hmm. He was down with them, right? He was definitely down with them, right? Um, the Native American adoption systems knew no color line. Carter G. Woodson's notion of an escape hatch from slavery proved correct. Native American villages welcomed fugitive slaves and some served as stations on the Underground hmm. Railroad. Native American villages welcomed fugitive slaves and some served as stations on the Underground Railroad. Right? stations why because harriet tubman harriet tubman's mom was free harriet tubman's mom was free mm -hmm. which means she was indigenous aboriginal and indigenous to the land never came over here on a slave ship or nothing like that right mm -hmm. during the transitional period of africans becoming the primary race enslaved so, right, during the transitional period of Africans becoming the primary race enslaved, so that means they weren't always the, first, the enslaved people, <laughs> right? Yeah. Somebody was enslaved before them, before right? This is what, how come they don't talk about this during Black History Month? That there were yeah. slaves before yeah. the African people yeah. were slaves, exactly. right? Native Americans were sometimes enslaved at the same time. So if Native Americans... So if Africans weren't the first enslaved people mm -hmm. and Native Americans were enslaved at the same time as Africans, that means the whole story of Africans being enslaved comes from the fact that they slaved the Native people. Of course, it's connecting the two. It's connecting the two, right? Africans and Native Americans work together, live together in communal quarters, produce collective recipes for food and shared herbal remedies, myths and legends. Some intermarried, some had mixed race children. Ads ask for the return of both African American and Native American slaves. Some Native Americans resented the presence of Africans. In one description, the Katawabi tribe in 1752 showed great anger and bitter resentment when an African American came along came among them as a traitor. No now why is why is uh, African American coming to trade, right, mm. with, them. with native tribes, or in amongst them, right, and amongst them, if he's not native himself, why, what, what, if he's a slave that came from Africa, what the hell are you trading? 
What you got? You don't have anything if you're a slave that came from Africa that you're gonna go trade with some 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 um Katawaba tribe. Must have been one of those right? Ones, eh? And again, Katawaba tribe, that's 1752, right? And this is how they play that detached game. Right. Right? To, to give the appearance that you know there was hatred between the Native Americans and the Africans or whatever. That that's infighting. That's not no big deal. Everybody has infighting. Yeah, Europeans yeah. infight. Yeah. Asians infight. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that shows it right there. That they were just pissed off that some dude that's from was here. so-called Africa that's was right. coming to trade with them, right? Right. Funny that they they also attach American to him as well. Exactly. Right. Because it could have just been an African. Like, yeah. Right. right. Or he could have just been American. Well, that's right. <laughs> right. Uh, or more important, he probably right. was just American. Was just American. Because, right. that's the other thing that you know. And how did? That's another question. How did he get here then? Right. And and also too, right. Again, coming back to the whole fraud and and understanding when people are running a fraud on you, it's so it's so easy to recognize. Right. Just like when somebody says black Egyptian, black people from Kemet. Right? right, you're taking a word that didn't exist in a time frame and putting yeah, it in the right. time frame. That's right. African American came about with 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 um Just Jesse know. Jackson. That's right. So right there, you can tell that someone's trying to implement right. putting putting making, putting, a, putting a title making uh, onto onto someone yeah, making this denationalized name African American this denationalizing term. That's right. Retroactive. By applying it to a time frame of right. 1752. Right. Taking a story and then applying a denationalized name to that. To that when that name didn't exist during that time. During 1752, there was no such thing as African Americans. That term didn't even exist. You know, you then have to question what they're talking about with that tribe too. <laughs> right? Right, but, but again, Negro Black Color people don't play detective. They just go with everything that's said, and, and that's what it is, and they just go with it, right? So let's go. Let's go see some of these so-called um, black Indians, as they call them, right? So this is so everybody's seen this picture, right? This is probably one of the most famous, quote-unquote, black Indian pictures, right? Okay, well, let's, let's read about her and see if she's black, mm -hmm. right? Diane Fletcher, right? Diane's father was born in Virginia. He was born in Virginia. And his father was born in Virginia. His parents were born in Africa and brought to America as what slaves. What year was that? Does it say? No? no, it doesn't say. Diane's father was born in Virginia. Yeah, I think it's like this is like 18 something. Okay. Diane's, right? father, yeah. Diane's father, father was born in Virginia. Right. His parents were born in Africa and brought to America as slaves. While still a young child, he was sold to a man who lived in Florida. He ran away and lived with the Seminole Indians. Mm -hmm. This is her father. Okay. Right? He ran away and lived with the Seminole Indians. Though still a slave. Mm -hmm. Right? Those still a Those slave. Still a slave. Okay. So he ran away. Right. But then they're saying he's a slave. Right. Right? So though still a slave, they treated him better than his former master. The Seminoles. Huh. Right? This is her father. Well, it's interesting that they're still too trying to apply a slave mentality. A slave mentality to, to, to a free man. Right. Okay. He married a Seminole woman. Which seems to sort of then begin the question, how could he be a slave and marry? And marry a Seminole woman. woman. Right? Why would they let a slave come into the tribe and marry right. one, of their free one of their free people? Right? Because if they have children, the child will be free. Right. Okay. Because the heritage comes through the mother. Comes through the mother. Right. And when you look at all these stories of these so called black Indians, their mom is the indigenous one. Right. And their dad is the African that came from the slavery that came and got adopted into the right. tribe. Right, and this goes back to this is how we know that that Noah Drew Ali was 
teaching us indigenous customs because he himself even said that he came for the young and unborn right he himself was holding a sister on the 101 cover because everything comes through the woman heritage has H-E-R nationality has to do with nature which is a mother right he married a seminal woman she died on the trail of tears the forced relocation of Indians to Oklahoma right and then they were again using that term right Indian mm -hmm. to identify to identify Aboriginal indigenous people when India is not here so those people can't be Indian well, within this whole within the whole description they're right nationalizing they're denationalizing right and then everybody falling for the denationalization right Edmonia Lewis now look at Edmonia Lewis right so-called again black Indian and look at her headdress just make sure you look at her headdress right okay this is a black Indian right it's a fez, right so black Indian wearing a tarbush why is a black Indian wearing a tarbush for right Edmonia Lewis was born July 4th 1844 her father was Haitian which is native mm -hmm. to the Americas of course while her mother was of Mississauga Ojibwe hmm. now the, the funny thing about this now is that what I left out is that her father was Haitian of African descent and her mother was of Mississauga Ojibwe and African descent right denationalizing Edmonia and her older brother Samuel you know, Samuel you know one of the seven no. right <laughs> were taken in and lived with their mother's sister for the next three years Lewis and her aunts sold Ojibwe baskets and other crafts to tourists visiting Niagara Falls Toronto and Buffalo becoming a successful businesswoman and gold prospector her brother Samuel paid for her tuition to the New York Central excuse me the New York Central College right this is not a black Indian and if we continue to let the fraud go on they will enslave us forever and we wouldn't even know that it's happening either right George Bonga George Bonga and then remember when we talked about remember when we talked about no, peace family we say right remember when we talked about um Django right spoke about Django and we spoke about the top hat being a variation of the fez right right, yeah. right okay and then look at him you know he's sitting in, you know dressed up so you know that he's not in a slave or nothing like that mm -hmm. you know slave dressing up like this right George Bonga was a fur trader right don't remember, remember this is 1802 to 1880 mm -hmm. right George Bonga was a fur trader of African American and Native American descent mm -hmm. Always tying them back to right. Africa. Always tying them back to Africa, right? And always making this term African American, which came about because of um Buddy Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson or whatever, right? Always making that term retroactive. Right. Why just say he's a more and be done with it? Why you have to tag him with the slave brand? So this is so that they're, they're right. nationalizing and taking the identity away, right? Right. Yeah. Who was one of the first African Americans born is in what is now Minnesota? He was the son of Pierre Bogna and an Ojibwe mother. Again. Again. The mother is the tie to the nationality. Right. What the mother is, the child is. So if the mother is Ojibwe, then he's Ojibwe. No, no need to tag him. African American, Native American, African descent, and all that. Right? Born after 1802, George was schooled in Montreal and later became a fur trader. 
He was famous in Minnesota for being, as his brother Stephen claimed, one of the first two black children born in the state. I doubt that's what his brother said. Right? Hmm. Because, again, he's Ojibwe. Right. right? He was also recognized for tracking down a suspected murderer in 1837 on Ojibwe named Shega Wa Skung. Right? C H E hyphen G A W A S K U N G. Then bringing the perpetrator back to justice at Fort Snelling. The ensuing criminal trial was reputedly the first in Minnesota. Right? Hmm. So he was like the first bounty hunter mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Right? A, a Moore. Mm -hmm. Not a Native American, whatever, Moore. Right? George Bongo was described as standing over six feet tall and weighing 200 plus pounds. Reports said that he would carry 700 pounds of fur and supplies at once. <laughs> right? Beast. 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 George Bonga. Right? Billy Bowlegs the third. Right? And when I put this picture up, just remember Easter Island. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Right? Just remember Easter Island. Right? So you know that those those stone the stone, uh, the stone hats, yeah. feathers that they have on mm -hmm. is real. Because this is just how they look on the Easter Island statues. Yeah. Right? So it's not, you know, they just did that out of stone. Here's a real being mm -hmm. wearing one of the same headwear. Okay. Right? Billy Bowlegs III. He was named Billy Fuel by his African American father, right? Wow. And Seminole mother, right? Right. So again, taking that slave, mm -hmm. so-called slave, mm -hmm. tagging him mm -hmm. as being connected to Africa, mm -hmm. and then the mother being connected to well, indigenous tribe, right? right? Fuel was also known by his seminal name, Kofi Hapki. But aren't they, in a, in a sense, by calling him Indian, aren't they then denationalizing him again? Yeah, in, for sure. In an attempt to for do sure. that, right? An attempt to do that, right? He learned the cultural ways of the Seminole from his mother's family and elders. His maternal grandfather was Oseola, O-S-C-E-O-L-A, and he was a member of the Snake Clan. Right? So look at our brother again. Right? And again, we made these pictures. We made these pictures black and white so you can distinctly see that, you know? You know yeah. Thank you. All right, no promises, no problem, anytime. Right? We're just going to make that move right now to the, to the, to the next spot. Give us, um, give us two minutes here. Clean that up after. Oh, yeah, there's, just, there's one more book in there. All right, you too, sis. Thank you. No, that was, no, that was coming out too. Get that shit. All right. Um, next up, um, Radmilla Cody. Radmilla Cody is a Navajo model, award-winning winning singer, and anti-domestic violence activist who was the 46th Miss Navajo from 1997 to 1998 and she was the first and thus far only Miss Navajo partially of African American heritage there you go again denationalizing people her nomination sparked considerable debate over Navajo identity Cody's songs 
are a mix of traditional Navajo music and songs incorporating lyrics written by her uncle Herman Kobe, Cody. Her first album entitled Within the Four Directions, which includes the Navajo version of the Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner. Her first album, keep this in mind, entitled Within the Four Directions. Right? What's within that four directions? Within the four directions is the seven in the middle of the broken circle, which represents the four directions. So she's talking, four yeah, the four points, right? And within the four directions is a seven, right? It's also the um, traditional, it's also the traditional, um, um, symbol of native people. What is number seven? No, the 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 circle. Oh, okay, the yeah, circle yeah. with the yeah, with yeah, the cross yeah, in it, yeah, yeah. and then they have the feathers at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So this is what Navajos look like. Right. This is how Navajos look. Navajos aren't some thin lip straight hair people. Right? Navajos are us. Right? Now we need to stop allowing ourselves to be denationalized by people because we don't know our history and we're just going with with what's with what's said, right? Um France Windance Twine. Her mother was a black American, right? Mm -hmm. Whose roots are in Louisiana Delta. Hmm. Right? If her roots are in the Louisiana Delta, right? What's the, what's the issue? Yo. Yo, we got through, yo. We're good. I'm at class. Oh, no, that was from a couple days ago, yo. I'll link you back, though. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Right? So, France Wind Dance. Her father was Native American Creek with roots in Oklahoma. And her mother was Black American with roots in Louisiana. Hmm. You have roots in Louisiana. You're not black. Right? And this is, this is her. So they're doing everything they can to name them, everything but what they but are. But what they are. Yeah, but what they are. Mm -hmm. Everything but what they are. Right? America, Louisiana, Oklahoma. Everything. Right? And since we just spoke about Oklahoma. Creeks in Oklahoma, left to right. Lokar Harjo, unidentified man, John McGivory, and Silas Jefferson, a.k.a. Hatalu Komiko, right? And the unidentified man, this is the unidentified man, right? And then everybody else is Creeks. Now, if we're looking at this brother right here, right? This is a Creek right here, a Creek so-called Indian. Right? He doesn't look like the other two. And then we look at this one right here. This one right here, he looks like Lou Diamond Phillips. Mm -hmm. Young Guns. Right? Take a picture break, do some reading. Right, now we're gonna go to First World Order by the good brother Alim L. Bay. Right, make sure you go get it, get the book too, First World Order. Because if anybody's gonna tell us about Aboriginal, Indigenous history and culture, it's gonna be Washita. Right. So we're just going to touch on a couple things in here just to get some clarity. 
because people like to talk crap right in the book gods and spacemen in the ancient west by w raymond drake so you're gonna go get that book right so you're gonna listen to gods and spacemen in the ancient west by w raymond drake in the ancient west yeah and the author is w raymond drake The land of the sunset beyond the western sea fascinated the ancients. Legends mourning Atlantis, that magical island drowned long ago, wondered whether those gray waters washed the far shores of some lost continent, realm of the gods. All the peoples of antiquity believed that departed souls crossed dim seas of dusk to some mysterious country in the west whence no traveler returned there to bask in the fields of the blessed to the west across the dark sea drifted the souls of the egyptians for judgment in amenti the babylonian hero gilgamesh sought immortality across the deep waters of death procopius in the bello gothico repeated the widespread traditions that the souls of the dead solemnly marched across Gaul to the channel to the channel coast whence the ghostly Sharon would ferry them over the sticks of Britia to wander onward ever seeking yon spectral shore in the west. <coughs> Celtic myths told muted tales of islands of splendor beloved by the gods manifesting to men then that glorious civilization rent suddenly with fire sank down to those sunless caverns of the deep the goths called the northern ocean mari marusa the sea of the dead for centuries a mystic twilight veiled the west only plaintive echoes murmured of the magic past and wonders of that land far away america is popularly supposed to have received its name from the mariner Mer amerigo vespucci Actually, Alberico Vespuzio, son of Anastasio Vespuzio, had the Italian sought immortality by christening the continent after himself, he would surely have honored his family by calling it Vespuzia, just as Colombia was called after Christopher Columbus. This is for all those clowns out there mm -hmm. that want to say that America got the name from Amerigo Vespucci hmm. when that's not even his name mm -hmm. Christopher Columbus right Amerigo Vespucci's name is Alberico Vespuzio okay. that's his name mm -hmm. right where does the Americo or something come from that's a fraud oh, they made up to made up in order to Claim the land of the Moors uh, once again. Well, who's, who's Amerigo Vespucci? Who's that? That's just a fraud name that no, they just he made up. To say, is, he, is he, is, is he a uh, child? Yeah, a, like he was a navigator or whatever. Oh, navigator. Right? Yeah. Italian navigator. Yeah. Right? And like 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 um Raymond Drake is saying, had the Italian sought immortality by christening the continent after himself, uh -huh. right. he would have surely have honored his family by calling it Vespuzia. That's right. Not. Amero. Not Amerigo. Which is still a because, because his name's Aberico. Right? In Central America, the word Americ, A M E R I C, signified great mountain, evoking Meru, the sacred mountain in Hindu tradition, said to be the center of the seven continents. Ancient America was linked with India through Las Lumeria. The early voyagers probably believed America to be the native word for the land itself, so they too would use it. Vespuzio's comrades, instead of Alberico, would nickname him Americo. Italian cartogra cartographers gleaned information about the New World from many sources, 
and would surely adopt the native name for the country calling it America. Some native tribes called their land Atlanta. Echo of Atlantis? Amaruka, A-M-A-R-U-C-A, -A is an ancient name for the continent, learned by the Inca of ancient Peru from the original Afrikanu who built civilization here. The Albions named themselves after the continent after they learned of the name when they arrived here a few centuries ago to plunder the land. This is the origin of the Albion giving himself the name Amerigo Vespucci. America is the root of Amerigo. Finally, the word for lion, it is also light as in the mane of the lion looks like the sun and its rays. In Merunetter is Ru. When Ra takes the form of a lion, in certain aspects of cosmology, he is called Ru Ra or Ur Ra, which becomes the Arabic word for Netter, God Allah. Amaruka, Amaraka, Amenraka, Amaruka are all related. The serpent colonists of the Americas, America, the land of the serpents, being situated between both Atlantis and Lemuria, made the Americas both a stepping stone and permanent destination for serpent colonists traveling from both motherlands. It was also a favorite destination for extraterrestrial serpents arriving from Venus and other parts of the cosmos. According to descendants of early Lemurian record keepers, the, and the Andean elders, the entire American landmass was anciently known as America, the land of the immortals, or the land of the wise serpents. The title America is derived from the Quechuan Lemurian word Amaru, meaning snake or serpent. Quechuan, Q-U-E-C-H-U-A-N, the language of the Incas, is derived from Runa Sima, the primal tongue spoken on Lumeria, and ends in the syllable Ka, which denotes both serpent and wisdom. Apparently, echoing the recollections of the Andean elders, H.P. Blavatsky maintains in the secret doctrine that America is referred to in the Hindu Paranas legends as Potala, the kingdom of the Nagas. The serpent colonists of South America, Amaru, Muru, the serpent Muru, M-U-R-U, one of the earliest immortal serpents of Mu to colonize America was Amaru, or sorry, Aramu, Muru, or Amaru Rumu, the serpent Muru. According to legend, moments before Mu's final demise, the serpent Muru, along with his consort Arama Mara, boarded an airship and headed to South America with a cargo of sacred records and artifacts, including a huge golden sun disk. The mountains of South America, the Andes, resonated on the same yin vibration as their beloved Mu and were, th and were thus considered suitable for the preservation of Lumerian culture. They were also home to the city of Petiti, one of the planetary headquarters of the Solar Brotherhood, an organization Aramu Muru had been a high-ranking member of on Mu. The name Moorish American is actually an oxymoron, meaning the word Moor and Amir having the same root and the name Moorish America is deriving from Aramu Muru or Amaru Moor, which is portion of the name Amuru Washita or a Maxim Washita Moor. In Stolen Legacy, written by George G. James, he states, The Moors are the custodians of the ancient mysteries of Egypt. The Moors, Merus, 
are not just the custodians, but the guardians, high priests of the sacred teachings. Read the teachings of Patahotep, the oldest book in the world, by Asa G. Hilliard, Larry Williams, and Nia Damali. The character of the owl, meaning wise ones or wisdom, an all-seeing eye, all-seeing and mouth of Ra, called Ru, meaning light, equals Ra Ru or O Ra, Allah, Allah Uma Elohim. The Merus, Moors, are the Neteru, Nagas, Niggas, Niggers, teachers or gods, goddesses. The owl can turn its head all the way around, hence being able to see in all directions, like our pioneer glands can see in all directions, whether it's past, present, or future. Remote view, Akashic records, prophecy. Mer, M-E-R, the guardian of. The oldest definition of the word more, remember all vowels are interchangeable in the language of Kamal, means deity amen, the hidden ones. As well, it means high priest. Let's not be confused because Tamare, Egypt, is actually a remnant of what of which came from El Muria or Lemuria, Mu and Atlantis. Even Sumaria, Sumeria, is an extension of Tamare. Tamare. The word Kemetic is not the name of the people who resided in Tamare. Repeat. The word Kemetic is not the name of the people who resided in Tamare. Tamare, or land of truth and light, they were known as Kamau, spirit of light. Kemet is the name of the black soil. The soil is red because of the cataclysm that happened many years ago. Read the Ebers Papyrus. So the Kemet is the name of the black soil not the black people. Kemnu is the term for black people, as we have erroneously been taught. The Merus, Moors, M-U-U-R-S, M-O-O-R-S, or M-A-U-R-S, a complete nation of high priests, knew that the highest knowledge was to know that man and creation are one and the same. All right, and that's from First World Order, Dr. Ali Mel Bay. All right, um, Bruce Stanton, Kilgore News Herald. Half a dozen runaway slaves wildly straggled into Spanish Francis Seminole village, having run away from their masters in North Carolina based only on rumors of a better life. They sought out the tribe's leader. King Payne could speak no English, and the travelers knew not the Seminole language, but did understand each other. Yeah. Right? So how do these runaway slaves mm -hmm. that only speak English, and then these Seminoles that only speak that language, come together, and, and they can have relations and understand each other? If they, do, if they weren't, they didn't have some type of connection. connection, right? And the only way they're gonna have that some that uh, connection like that is if they know each other. Yeah. And the only way that somebody who came over here from us from Africa as a slave, and somebody in the Americas is gonna know each other, is if they're in the same family. Yeah. Somewhere back there. Somewhere they're in the same family. Right? And it could have been as much as phenotype. Yeah. That's how somebody looks, yeah. you know, you that, like oh, hey, yeah, yeah. how come you look like my uncle, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because they're the same family. Right? The smile on King Payne's face as he mentioned them to follow him made them feel at ease. Right? Mm -hmm. So this King of Seminole, right. because, you know, we're talking about history, like if we break it down, we're mm -hmm. talking about history in the Americas, right? Right. And that there was this thing called slavery of so-called Negro black color people. Right. Right? And a chief in a Aboriginal tribe 
is seeing runaway slaves and he's happy to see them come yeah right he's welcoming his people home. he's welcoming them back home and what was the job of them to do the same job that noble Juali was came to do bring them back into bring the them job. back into the constitutional fold of government because at that time we're talking about 1500s right. remember like you know 1500s 1600s 1700s we're still the united states government is new yeah there is no real government there's no real government at that time right. other than the aboriginal government yeah. right through the brush of the blacks followed the red man into a clearing their nostrils filled with the fragrance of corn stalks broken soil fruit growing and food cooking grown men's eyes filled with tears of joy as they saw long cabins made of palmetto boards with thatched roofs right grown men's eyes filled with tears of joy as they saw long cabins right the long cabins are the long houses yeah, yeah. right the same long houses that the lodges are today yeah. right we taught these Europeans government Cuscoilla the town before them became home to them and many others who no longer wanted to be owned by another man near modern-day St. Augustine this village gave many sanctuary gave many sanctuaries starting in about 1783 Hmm. Right? So, you're telling me... 1783? 1783. They're starting sanctuary? Yeah. So, wasn't the, the Christian the, Black the, Codes... The right? Okay, so, right? Okay, so there's there's Christian Black Codes going on. Right. There's Negro Acts. There's all this stuff yeah, yeah. going on. Right? Slaves escaping. Right. Now, when they show the story of a slave escaping, right. they chase him till they find him. Right. It's not a slave escaped and... Oh, okay, well, you know... Right. Slave escape, too bad. Okay, we got 50 more here. No, they go after them. Yeah. Okay, so you tell me they didn't go after them and see this sanctuary right. and realize that, oh, oh, all the slaves are being housed over there in that sanctuary. Right. You know, we're going to come back here in the nighttime. Yeah. We're going to burn the sanctuary down yeah. and we're going to take all our slaves back. Why? Because once you get adopted back into the nation, that's it. You're no longer a slave. You're no longer a slave. So just in between brackets. This is the exact same thing that Noble Juali did. Who wrote the book? All these guys wrote it? No, that's one? that's um that's all Alim Bay's titles. Oh, it's from Alim Bay. Yeah, 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 that's Alim Bay's book. Alim right. just spelled L I A M. Yeah. Right. After receiving time to rest from their journey, the ex-slaves were issued tools to till the soil. Seeds to plant and weapons for self-defense against slavers who also became theirs. Against slavers? Slavers who also became theirs. What does that mean? Over time, some found Seminole women willing to marry them and the two races merged. The blacks proved themselves to be carpenters, hunters, farmers, and fishermen. So seeds to plant and weapons for self-defense against slavers who also became theirs. I don't understand that part. Is that Slavers is the... Slaveholders. Not the slave masters. Slavers are the overseers that they sent out. Right. Who then they might who then Who then realized what was going on and they got down with ah. getting down in the nation. Right, right. Oh, that, you're saying they might have had another Uncle Tom chasing them. Uncle down. Tom chasing them. Right. And when right. Uncle Tom sees what's going on, right. he's like, Screw this, then so yeah. why am I going to go back to the plantation when yeah. I could be right here? Yeah, yeah, be free too. Be free too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. You know, and, and then that brings up the whole thing again about, so now you have two people missing. Right. Your slave ran away. Then he sent Uncle Tom. Yeah. And then Uncle Tom went to get him. And Uncle Tom never came back. And he said, oh, okay. <laughs> We'll just, you know, forget it. We got, there's another Uncle Tom right there. Yeah, just, you know, yeah, put him on the horse yeah, yeah. and let's just keep it moving. Yeah. And this is supposed to be a business? Yeah. You know what I mean? Fraud. Every day, all day. 
right? John Horse, a Seminole Negro, right? Like, this is the game that they play. They're always attaching adjectives. Attaching the adjective, right? They might even attach an adjective to a misnomer. That's right. That's what they're <laughs> right. doing right there. Yeah. Right? A rose to lead his people. Another man, a Seminole called Wildcat, became a leader also. Together they kept the tribe from extinction. After years of fighting to stay in Florida, the American military finally won. The Seminoles and their black partners were all shipped to Indian territory. Why are they going to take these blacks who were just slaves or whatever? Mm -hmm. After they lose the war, mm -hmm. they're going to send them off to some... They're not going to take them put them back in slavery? Like Why wouldn't they put them back in slavery? If, if they just lost the war, mm -hmm. right? And you know that, okay, well, these guys over here are the Seminoles, right. and these guys over here are the blacks mm -hmm. that the Seminoles brought in. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you just take the blacks back? Right? This game that they play. Right? And then you could just, just go, just look up Bruce Stanton. Kilgore News Herald and it's just an article just talking about the the black connection or whatever, right? So here's some more so-called So-called black Indians, right? You know that these are Moors These are no black Indians There's no such thing as black Indians, right? All right black Indians, right? This right here looks like some people's grandma and stuff from the islands. With the big glasses and everything. Mm -hmm. Right? So-called, right? So-called black Indians. No such thing as black Indians, right? Now, we're gonna, now when we look at this picture now, we know for sure now there's no such thing as black Indians because this one's just like a moor. And this is... Shaman Red Deer. Shaman Red Deer wearing his turban, right? Mm. Shaman Red Deer wearing his Moroccan vest or Moroccan jacket, right? Okay. Okay, look at his wardrobe. This is not no black Indian. Right? Impossible that this is a black Indian. Right? These are the New Orleans Moors, dressing up for Mardi Gras, hmm. looking like some Caravana pictures. Yeah, looking some Indian chief, right? Hmm. You know, practicing our culture, Aboriginal and Indigenous to the land, right? Aboriginal and Indigenous. Um, Wayne Duncan. You know these are brothers right here. You don't know red skinned people. Right? All you gotta do, man, is listen to the music though. That too. Right? When you listen to the music, it sounds like African music. Yeah. Yeah. And I always wondered from long time ago, I was like, how come it sounds the same? Sounds like, like even, that. even the tools, the way they use the rhythm, I'm like it sounds the same as West African music. Yeah. Now it makes sense, right? Right. It's all one landmass, one people. Right. One people. Right. Wow. Huh. Right. All our people. And while while you're looking at these ones, what you can do, if you're online, just Google, just Google images search Carabana in Toronto. Right? Google search Carabana in Toronto and remember these pictures right here. And then Google search Carabana in Toronto and just look at the Carabana in Toronto pictures. You tell me if this is some African people that came over here on some slave ship. Why is African people going to come over here on slave ship and and be dressing up for Mardi Gras. Right? Yeah. 
right? Between 1790 and 1830, the population of Georgia increased sixfold. The western push of the settlers created a problem. Georgians continued to take Native American lands and forced them into the frontier. By 1825, the Lower Creek had been completely removed from the state under provisions of the Treaty of Indian Springs. So you're going to go check out the Treaty of Indian Springs. Right? Cherokee had long called Western Georgia home. The Cherokee Nation continued in their enchanted land until 1828. It was then that the rumored gold for which DeSoto had relentlessly searched was discovered in the Georgia mountains. In his book, Don't Know Much About History, Kenneth C. Davies writes, so the book is called Don't Know Much About History, and the author's name is Kenneth C. Davis. Hollywood has left the impression that the great Indian wars came in the Old West during the 1800s, a period that many think of simplistically as the cowboy and Indian days. But in fact, that was a mopping up effort. By the time the Indians were nearly finished, their subjugation complete, their numbers disseminated, decimated, the killing, enslavement, and land theft had begun with the arrival of Europeans. But it may have reached its nadir when it became federal policy under President Andrew Jackson. The Cherokees in 1928 were not nomadic savages. In fact, they had assimilated many European-style customs, including the wearing of gowns by Cherokee women. They built roads, schools, and churches, had a system of representational government, and were farmers and cattle ranchers. A Cherokee alphabet, the talking leaves, was perfected by Sequoia. In 1830, the Congress of the United States passed the Indian Removal Act. Although many Americans... Although many Americans were against the act, most notably Tennessee Congressman Davy Crockett, it passed anyway. President Jackson quickly signed the bill into law. The Cherokees attempted to fight removal legally by challenging the removal laws in the Supreme Court and by establishing an independent Cherokee nation. At first, the court seemed to rule against the Indians. In Cherokee Nation versus Georgia, the court refused to hear a case extending Georgia's laws on the Cherokee because they did not represent a sovereign nation. In 1832, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Cherokee on the same issue in Worcester versus Georgia. In this case, Chief Justice John Marshall ruled that the Cherokee nation was sovereign, making the removal laws invalid. The Cherokee would have to agree to removal in a treaty. The treaty then would have to be ratified by the state. By 1835, the Cherokee were divided and despondent. Most supported Principal Chief John Ross, who fought the encroachment of whites starting with 1832 land lottery. However, a minority, less than 500 out of 17,000 Cherokee, followed Major Ridge, his son John, and Elias Boudinot, who advocated removal. The Treaty of New Echota, E-C-H-O-T-A. The Treaty of New Echota, signed by Ridge and members of the Treaty Party in 1835, gave Jackson the legal documentation he needed to remove first Americans, ratification by the treaty by the United States, sealed the fate of the Cherokee. Among the few who spoke out against the ratification, were Daniel Webster and Henry Clay, but it passed by a single vote. In 1838, the United States began the removal to Oklahoma, fulfilling a promise that the government made to Georgia in 1802. Ordering to remove the Cherokee, General John Wool resigned his command in protest, delaying the action. His replacement, General Winfield Scott, arrived in the new at Chota on May 17, 1838, with 7,000 men. Early that summer, General Scott and the United States Army began the invasion of the Cherokee Nation. Right? And then this is the, the map of 
the map of how they got the Cherokee out of their jurisdiction into Oklahoma. Right? Hmm. Now, interestingly, it's very interesting is that when we have the, um, when we go to the Indian Removal Act, right? Mm -hmm. Comes back again to that same, the same game of tagging the Aboriginal Indigenous Moors mm -hmm. as Indians in order to in order to get the jurisdiction, right? To get them out out, out of their own land, of course. right? And they had to have some sellout chiefs and all that within the ranks. Mm -hmm. No different, you know. Like we said in the beginning, history repeats itself. Yeah. Same way they got Noble Juali out. The, the chiefs or the quote unquote sheiks around him, mm -hmm. right? Sold the out. sheiks around him sold out, right. sold out the nation in order to give the European jurisdiction, right? In the affairs of Moors that have nothing to do with Europeans, right? So when we look at um, the jurisdiction now that they, the Indian Removal Act, the Indian Removal Act got all these eastern tribes into western territory, right? right. Namely Oklahoma. And then, then the, the history of that is known as the Trail of Tears, right? Mm -hmm. And then when we look at this map, you can see um, Indian territory was mainly this is this is these are mainly the states that they sort of pushed them into, right? They mainly pushed them into these states, right? So we have we have Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. Texas right but from there they moved them all into Oklahoma yeah. right and then the, the removal of them out of their own land mm -hmm. into Oklahoma mm -hmm. is called Trail of Tears yeah. right now what's interesting about the Trail of Tears is that at the end of the Trail of Tears is Oklahoma right that's where they finally Put them. Put them, and that's where they sort of pretty much just, you know, said, okay, we're gonna just going to mm -hmm. stay here, yeah. right? Okay, which leads us to the second half of the the name of the class, Black Wall Street. Right. Right? That, you know, comes to say, to say the tagging, tagging of Aboriginal Indigenous culture mm -hmm. with this term, black, yeah. in order to gain jurisdiction to do whatever it is that they have to do to Aboriginal indigenous people. Because there's two races on the planet. Mm -hmm. Indigenous people mm -hmm. and foreigners. That's it. Either you're indigenous mm -hmm. or you're a foreigner. Right? Or colonizer, yeah. okay. you know, conqueror, yeah. whatever, right? So Black Wall Street. Searching under the heading of riots, Oklahoma and Tulsa. In current editions of the World Book Encyclopedia, there is conspicuously, conspicuously no mention whatsoever of the Tulsa Race Riot of 1921, and its omission is by no means a surprise or a rare case. The fact is, one would also be hard-pressed to find documentation of the incident, let alone the accurate accounting of it, in any other scholarly reference or American history books. That's precisely the point that noted author, publisher, and orator Ron Wallace, a Tulsa native, sought to make nearly five years ago when he began researching this riot, one of the worst incidents of violence ever visited upon the people of African descent. There you go, lying again. Mm -hmm. Right? Ultimately, it's like, it's like, you know, we, we're so, we're so, um, we abandon our culture, mm -hmm. 
right? We abandon our Aboriginal indigenous culture to the fact that we're adopting a foreigner's culture, yeah. right? And claiming that as our culture. No different than, you know, um, when Moors made the statement, well, you know, the true and divine name of Africa is a Mexum. Right. And a Mexum includes over here because all this was one landmass. Right. And this is north of Mexum over here. Mm -hmm. Well, no, there can't be a Mexum because America comes from Amerigo Vespucci, mm -hmm. where we just read that that's not even his name. Right. All right. Scipio Africanus, where Africa comes from, mm -hmm. that wasn't even his name. Right. Scipio Africanus was a title that he got for defeating, for defeating the Moors. Right. right. And then after you get defeated by the conqueror, the conqueror brands you with his name. His name right. Because you've been conquered. And we call and we follow that pattern. And we take that we take that conquered name now mm -hmm. and then we you we we we're using that name now. Yeah. Right? The date was June first, nineteen twenty one, when Black Wall Street, quote unquote, the name fittingly given to one of the most affluent all black communities in America was bombed from the air and burned to the ground by mobs of envious whites. In a period spanning fewer than 12 hours, a once thriving 36 black business district in northern Tulsa lay smoldering, a model community destroyed, and a major African-American economic movement resoundingly diffused. Right? Right? The pattern, right? So when we do our history research and we see these things, African American, black, you know, Negro, slave, right, um, free blacks, you know, um, all these terms, mm -hmm. right? All these terms are specifically used mm -hmm. to get us to not identify ourselves as yeah. Moors. Yeah. And yeah. once we don't identify ourselves as Moors, they can go under the radar now and they could control everything, right? Just throw a bomb there. Right, because remember, it, like we don't know what they called it. That's right. This is modern people saying, "Oh yeah, that's Black Wall Street," because you know there was black people there or whatever. But they never called it Black Wall Street. Right. That was the end of the Trail of Tears for them. Right. So that that one there. Um. That was just a that was just an article that you can go out there and. Just Google Black Wall Street and then it'll come up and all that stuff, will, right? Okay? So we're not even going to go through that to hear this black crap they're talking about, right? Um, a black holocaust in America, right? <laughs> right? Again. Ron Wallace and J.J. Wilson. Let me introduce you to the most infamous of them all that was located in Tulsa, Oklahoma that came to be known as Black Wall Street. The name was fittingly given to the most affluent all black blah blah blah. The state of Oklahoma was set aside to be a black and Indian state. Hmm. So. Right. The so. State. The state of Oklahoma was set aside. Right. To be a black and Indian state. Otherwise known as a reserve. Otherwise known as a reserve. Right? So the first reserve was Oklahoma. Yeah. Right? Where they started implementing these practices of denationalization, yeah. misrepresentation, yeah. Um, disassociation, yeah. right? Anything that they can to get the Moors to give up what it is that they had. It also shows probably the, the size of the problem. Right. You have to take a whole state. You take after, you have to take a whole state to put all these people to in. To put these people in. Right. right. Now, mind you, right, we're not even talking about the Aboriginal people in well, Canada. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about the Aboriginal people from Peru, yeah. Colombia, Mexico, yeah. all those areas. Mm -hmm. Right. We're just dealing with the ones in that region, That's right. you know, that they moved along the Trail of Tears. Right. Right? Well, obviously somewhat successful or 
or together. Right, but but remember that you know they they create they create a radar. Right. Right. They create a jurisdiction mm -hmm. and then have you focus on that jurisdiction and then we think that that's it. Yeah, yeah, of right, of course. and we don't look at anything else. Meanwhile, they behind the scenes are cleaning up. They're, they're cleaning up everything else right. behind the scenes while we're paying attention to this. Right. Another point worth noting: nearly a third of the people who traveled in the terrifying Trail of Tears alongside the Indians from 1830 to 1842 were black people. How much? How much percent? Thirty. Um, ne no, nearly a third. A third of the people. 33%, right? Right. So a third of the people, right. right, that were in the Trail of Tears mm -hmm. were so-called black people, right? Mm -hmm. And we just read that if we use common sense, we know that the majority of those people weren't slaves that ran away from plantations or whatever. Those were indigenous people mm -hmm. that were running away from plantations. That's why they were adopted back into the tribe so quickly. Yeah. Because they were indigenous people. And like you said, the tribe may have been a misnomer too. Right. As well, right. 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 Um, there was a man named Mason in nearby Wagner County who had the largest potato farm in the West. He, When he harvested, he would fill 100 boxcars a day. Wow. Now, how is this black man... Right, as they call him in the article, Mason. Mm -hmm. This black man know about harvesting potatoes in the Americas if he comes from Africa where that's not there. Let me tell you the story that basically the potato was brought over by right? the Irish, right? Right. The potatoes brought over here by some Europeans, right? Wow. But he's harvesting 100 boxcars of potatoes on this side. From, and that's some that's supposed to be some foreigner some foreigner vegetable right another black man not far away was doing the same thing with the spinach farm the typical family averaged five children or more although the typical farm family would have 10 kids or more who made up the nucleus of the labor what was what was significant about black wall street was they understood an important principle. They kept the money in the community. Right. Right, same thing. Last night, talking we were talking about last night with Brother, with brother Fonteus, right? The dollars circulated 36 to 1,000 times within the community. Sometimes taking a year for currency to leave the community. Something, yeah, read that again. Wow. The dollars circulated 36 to a thousand times within the community. When? Within a year? That's not even giving you a date on that, but it, it doesn't really matter, does it? Somet sometimes taking a year oh, yeah. for the currency to leave the community. So the currency is going to each other's hands wow. for a whole That's year. Answer. That's the answer right there, isn't it? Right, the currency is going to each other's hands for a whole the year. Currency is currents, right? So energy. So energy is around being in the village for a year. They don't need nothing from anyone. Anyone, but why do they need nothing from every anyone? Because they're indigenous to the land, and they have everything that they need in the land that they're on. And the community that they're in. And the community that they're in is housed on the land that's theirs. So if you grow potatoes and you have a hundred boxcars of potatoes, that's a hundred percent profit. Because you're not selling to anybody else other than your own, or trading or bartering with anybody other than your own. You have spinach farm, that's your own. And you have carpenters and all of If you that. carpenters, you have all these people now working together, working as a nation, an indigenous nation. And like the other article said, this was the model. So this model was obviously, the word was going to spread, right? That this is our land. We don't need to go anywhere. We don't need European for nothing. Even on a reserve, this is our land. Even if they moved us here, we're, this is still our land. And we have access to everything that we need in the land. We don't have to go to the foreigner for anything. 
secret. Right? And not only do we have to go to the foot, you know, it's like um, I, I was talking with Brother Fontes too. And he was saying that, you know, with, with, with the things that he sells, mm -hmm. right? Spices, herbs, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever that he has, right? Mm -hmm. He'll go to um, events and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And Europeans will come to buy stuff and he'll tell them, no, I'm not selling to you. But why can't, why will you sell to me? Because you can't afford to buy what I have. What do you mean you can't afford to buy? You know, I'm, I'm you know, ugh, I could put down. I don't care what you could put down. You can't afford this. What do you mean? What do you mean you can't afford them? Like, they can't afford it. In which way? Like what? That because his purpose is to uplift. uplift his people. Sell to his own. Keep the money in the family. Have the goods, not only, not only the finance, right. but even have the goods circulate just amongst our own. Which is where the real resource is in. Not, not just the money changing yeah. hands amongst our own, but the resources that we have mm -hmm. staying in-house. Yeah. Where, where do the spices come from? The spices? They, come from they come from other Asiatics who understand nationhood and they're going to sell to their brother. You know, no, no, it's not no issue. But if we, if we play the game of, well, those guys are Sri Lankan and they have straight hair, so they're not my brother. And then these guys are Asian and they have straight hair and they're not my brother. We also ourselves, yeah. we take ourselves out the equation. Yeah. When they're dying to do business with us. They're dying to do business with us. Mm -hmm. But but they also know that they're not going to do no business with black people. Yeah. Negroes, colored, African people, because all those are fraud. And more than likely, they're property of the European. Right. And if they if if we're gonna take the European mentality that we're gonna go buy spices from the Asiatic and then we're gonna take it and then we're gonna sell it. To, the, to whoever just to make a quick profit. That's a European mentality. Yeah, I know. I know, man. We're not going to take it and yeah, stretch yeah, it out yeah, yeah, yeah. to make sure we get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. We're going to take it and take that big bag of whatever we get yeah. and sell that big bag of whatever we get right, yeah, just yeah, right yeah, away yeah. and then have nothing again. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true, Pattern. That's real talk, yeah. Right? Something the African America community of today does not fully appreciate or practice because a dollar will leave the black community today in 15 minutes. Right? But why would the dollar leave the black community in 15 minutes? Because they're black. And they don't have the concept of nationhood. Right? They're tribal. They're not even tribal. They're even lower than tribal. Right? That the funds aren't even going to stay into the community 15 minutes. Right? Think about that. It's going to go, it's going to go around, right, 36 to 1,000 times in Aboriginal, Indigenous community, so-called Black Wall Street. But then today, 15 minutes has gone out of the community. That's what they're saying? Yeah. But also, we got to keep in mind also that the segregation that they had at the time helped. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, but they had no choice but to deal with each other. With each other, yeah. But I mean, right now we're we're in that position right now. We have no choice well, but to deal with each other. That's true. You know what I mean? Well, but we don't get it, though. You don't get it, right? This community was so tight and wealthy because they traded dollars hand to hand, because they do they were dependent upon one another as a result of Jim Crow laws, mm. just like you're saying, yeah. right? Another powerful image and extremely significant was education. The foundation of the community was to educate every child because they understood that education is the single most important ingredient necessary to neutralize those forces that breed poverty and despair. When students went to school, they wore a suit and tie because of the morals and respect they were taught at a young age. In addition, Nepotism contributed greatly to the success of this community 
as well as a way to help one another, a tactic that needs to be installed in our culture today. A postscript to Tulsa's legacy is the world-renowned R&B music group, The Gap Band. The group of brothers Charlie, Ronnie, and Robert Wilson, who chose the group's name, taken from the first letters in the main thoroughfare, Greenwood Avenue, that intersects with Archer and Pine Streets. From those letters you get Gap. Another legendary figure from Tulsa is their favorite son, basketball great and jazz musician, the late Wayman Tisdale. These are just a few luminaries that Tulsa has produced, surely the most recognized today. An unprecedented an unprecedented amount of global businesses was conducted from within the Black Wall Street community, which flourished from the early 1900s until 1921. Then the unthinkable happened, and the community faced a, val a valley, or more accurately stated, feel of a cliff. The Black Wall Street community suffered the largest massacre of non-military Americans in the history of this country. As you might well imagine, the lower economic Europeans looking over and saw how prosperous the black community had become and destroyed it. I don't know the true reason. Jealousy was mentioned, but racism was certainly at its core. Led by the infamous KKK working in concert with ranking city officials and many other sympathizers. This is 1921, remember, right? Destruction began Tuesday evening, June 1st, 1921. When Black Wall Street June was what? June 1st, 1921, when Black Wall Street, the most affluent all-black community in America, was bombed from air and burned to the ground by mobs of resentful whites. In a period spanning fewer than 12 hours, a once thriving black district in northern Tulsa lay smoldering. Among them were 21 churches, 21 restaurants, 30 grocery stores, two movie theaters, a hospital a bank, a post office, libraries, schools, law offices, half a dozen private airplanes, and even a bus system. This historic event you would think should be common knowledge, but not so. One would be hard pressed to find any documentation concerning the incident, let alone an accurate account of it. And why they hide it? Because if you research Black Wall Street, it's gonna lead you back to the Aboriginal indigenous dark skinned people. Just like if you research black history, it's going to lead you to 1492 and the expulsion of the Moors from Spain. Mm. You see the story? You can't escape it. That, that story that you got over here, man. You know what's funny is that a lot of people think that this was the only story that was similar that happened right. between black people. But it was, remember I told you about the book called Black Eggs? Yeah. That's about the Moors that they, they were called the Maroons, right? The yeah. three Moors that was in Jamaica. And the thing is that they won the war twice against the British. Yep. And the British just couldn't do anything. That's why they have their own part of the island. It's the one part that's like independent in Jamaica. That's right? supposed to be their it, reserve or it, whatever. Exactly. Right. So what they did is they gave them land in Nova Scotia. Uh, and it was different than the rest of Nova Scotia. I don't know if it was Africville. Africa. 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 Oh, yeah. I, I yeah, Africa, 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 yeah. 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 Right, right. Right. Was coming here. Right. I guess now that, right. Now right. that fits in with exactly who these people are. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. They didn't come from Africa. Well, no, well, well again. Yeah. Right? They, they right. had like, they had their own laws. They had their no, own jurisdiction. And the, the rest of the I'm black people there, yeah. were like black people right. running away. Yeah. Right. But check the play, right? If these so-called people came from Africa on a slave ship, right? And you're gonna destroy them. Why don't you send them back to Africa? Why are you gonna create a jurisdiction in the Americas and put them there, and then call it Africville when they're in America? Yeah. Well, unless, true. unless, unless this is Africa. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Right? Why would they call it Africville? Why would they call a, a landmass or a jurisdiction to house? so-called runaway slaves from Africa, Africville, yeah. when they came from know, Jamaica, which isn't, which, isn't, which was, isn't Africa. Yeah, I don't remember which part was called Africville, though, because right? it was two different parts. One of them was coming from the uh, the Moors, but the Moors weren't runaway slaves. They, they, they signed a treaty of peace. The British signed a treaty of peace with them because they, they kept winning the war, so they gave them the land, Nova right. Scotia. 
And right. one part of it was where the black slave were. I don't remember which one was Zachary Villa, yeah. which one was the other one. But uh, one of them was three. But anyway, long story short, man, the same thing pretty much happened. In the, in yep. the Black Wall Street. It's a pattern. Yeah, they had like some, eventually after a while, those guys were gaining a lot of like, you know what I mean? A lot of like politic power, a pattern. prestige, yeah. become yeah. so big that the West felt threatening. Yeah, but remember, the same thing happened. What, but, what, but what's really the threat? The threat is that we don't need you for anything. Mm. Yeah. That's the threat. Mm. The threat is you want segregation? Okay, cool. We'll be fine by ourselves. You guys are the ones that have to worry about, about segregation because we're the ones that support you. We don't need anything from them once we deal with ourselves. Right? Autonomously. Autonomously. Yeah. What, what was even crazier is that in the story, they were even saying that the poor white were starting to like follow. The of black course. people and black politicians that's, too, because they were like, we were that, better that, that's, that's, that's evidence. Yeah, yeah, that's how they got yeah. everything that they have yeah, yeah, they by following. following them, yeah. That's how they have everything that they have. They have everything that they have right now today because of what the Moors taught them in Europe when they were in the Dark Ages. The other main problem I see behind all of this is the fact that if no matter what, it's like planting, it's like planting. You know, when Tom talks about the fake plant and the real plant. Right. By planting real seeds, ultimately a real tree is going to grow. It's going to grow. So ultimately what's going to happen is that tree is going to be connected back to yeah. it, to its identity. Right. 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 So ultimately, we can pretend like we're going to give you back a little piece of land, but we have to continue to keep cutting your roots off. Because ultimately you're going to connect back to, to back the land. To eventually, it's going to happen. Ultimately, that pineal gland right. stuff right. is all going to have you right. come back. Exactly. So no matter what, we may give you a concession now, but it's ultimately with the intent that if it fails, then we're okay. If you keep identifying yourself with, with black bl- and, right. and stuff and stuff, we're, we're, we're good. That. We're good. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's, if we start, well, which naturally happens once we get just together. Going. It's just gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna right? happen. It's like the it's like the seed in the ground. It's gonna grow. Right. So we then have to ultimately cut you down again. Right. All right. And right. that may take. And what it is is probably like Tara uh, talks about as these spirits keep coming back. Mm. Certain times there are certain spirits that are natural leaders yeah. and natural yeah, yeah. natural not natural right. growth periods. So yeah. we have to wait till we can off that guy or off those set of people or do whatever. Right. And the question is when that person comes. Or are they gonna follow them, or are they gonna do like all the other people and not fucking listen and turn turn against him and start hating on him? No, see, this is and where start, and start not right? believing him and start turning into an agent. Right. Know? Well, the, and and this is where. So, but I sense that the prophets that. can are never the prophets are never the ones who will change. It's always the people around right. them that all you you end yeah. up put, putting in these agents very close to him. Yeah. If they can't sort of push him off to the side or marginalize him, then they kill him. Yeah. Right, yeah. or if not, they set up sects that are sort of the same, but not really right, the same. Right. You know, it's, NOI, all that kind right. of stuff. It's right? like even even amongst you know like people, it's like we we talk about this all the time. People always talk about you know, well, when the more is gonna get united? Mm. How come the Moors aren't united? Right. Was well, everybody having a fez, that's unity. Mm. Everybody having a nationality card in their pocket, I don't care what it looks like, that's, that's unity. unity. Everybody saying that flag with the red star, I don't care whether it's a if it's a interlock green star mm-hmm. or a solid green star mm-hmm. or a, a whatever yeah. if it's a green star in the middle of a red flag yeah. that's a moorish flag yeah. that's unity mm-hmm. right everybody's gonna say oh which temple is the real temple um you know let me see your charter mm-hmm. who cares right. yeah. the charter says unity on there that's right the handshakes on there that's right there's unity that's right but that perspective of unity is only going to be amongst uh, active Moors. Right. Mm-hmm. Only among active Moors. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, you see, like I said, the way I see it, man, the way this game is going to have to be dealt with, it's going to have to be dealt with with black people as they are right now. Well, of course. Like the strategy is going to have to come from people like how we're sitting over here, we know the whole game, we understand what's going on, but we're going to have to dumb down a plan where 
I want to say like, 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 like no. unifying both worlds. No, the I, world of the complete conscious with the dumb nigga. I was at your cousin's house yesterday when we were to watch some some stuff, and he had this show on the LA Gangs. Yeah. And it was the Crips and the Bloods. And he's talking about all these people. And basically, this was all about the uh, Black Panthers. Yeah. And all these guys, which you know, ultimately, this was still yet again the same seeds right, that are right, growing, right. trying to bring us together. Yeah, 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 but they had to yeah, cut all these. Yeah, they had yeah. to cut the Black yeah, Panthers yeah, yeah, and yeah, separate yeah, them and kill them, right? Yeah, yeah, but what yeah. happened? Out of that came all these gangs, yeah. Right? Yeah. which was all of our yeah. tribes in yeah. another yeah, sense. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, and what true. happens is they were able to infiltrate and cause these people to sort of start doing some really, because back in the days it was like the blood's over here and the yeah, over yeah. here and there was never really any fighting. There was right. sometimes infighting, yeah, but there was yeah, never this was fight, never, yeah, yeah, yeah. fighting in between. Like but what they were able to then, but that was, but that was then again growth. Right. Right. So then they had to right. get in there and, and mix that and stuff mix that, up. Yeah, right. so then break that down. Break that down. Yeah. So then what they did was, the, and this is why I say the spirit never dies. So in the end of it all, it's the bloods and the crypts and everyone fighting against each other and all these hundreds of gangs that they've been trying to disseminate and separate. But what happens is, what they're doing is getting people to kill them, and then what you've noticed, this ties along within the prisons system right, yeah. that they're trying to build, right? Because right, yeah. what they're then trying to do is get yeah, slavery yeah. back in again right, yeah. by by the three-strike rule, right? So mm -hmm. you notice all this stuff and this yeah, diabolical yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. What they're realizing is now the Bloods and the Crips hate each other, but they're putting them back into the... What the man said was, well, the slave plantation is America, yeah. but the slave ship is prison. Right. So once yeah. they put them back in prison... Yeah. The same Bloods and Crips who on the streets were killing each other. Yeah. All of a sudden now... And they now find a common... No, no. We're now... They were their best buddies yeah. in prison right. because they were fighting against the Aryans yeah, yeah. and the Mexicans and the, right, 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 right. who were yeah. the next the, the, setting. Right, right. Yeah. So, and what was happening was, unfortunately, these guys were now binding back again yeah. because yeah. you're the same people. Right. Yeah, so exactly. you can try and separate us and do all this crap. Yeah, but but, but, but ultimately, to, ultimately, yet again, right. we're going to come back to the same family. Right. And if we're fighting against the Euro and the Mexican, who yeah. sort of is still our yeah, 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 too, yeah, right. but still sort of like that, that ugly cousin who's, yeah. who's yeah, ugly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> who's ugly. But what I'm saying is the, the, the nature of it is it's like sort of like a magnet. Once right. we come back together, yeah. there's going to be growth. Yeah. So they're, like I think I said again, it's like this octopus. they got to have their hands, hands in it. In, yeah. They're trying to separate, but they have to keep us together. Yeah, but they, yeah. right? you know what? And you know what? To some degree, so, even though I don't like these dudes for what they're doing, i got to respect their game. Well, the, well, that's right. That's they, 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 they're they're that's an evil they, genius shit. They, they, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Diabolically some clever. Evil, evil you know what I mean? Stuff. But where the problem is, and that's clever. why I think you're right about this, the problem is, is we somehow have to get Above, above that 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 sort of baseline that we're at, which yeah. is that we're sort of still hating right. that yeah. man over there and not understanding he's our brother. Right, but that's where, the, but that's why they have, the, that's why they in, do the infiltration right. for that to happen. Right. For me to look at a brother and say, "Yo, you're a yeah. nigger. Yeah. I can't yeah. stand your ass." Yeah. You know, but it's not that I can't and stand you where, because I hate you. I can't stand you because you're a damn agent. That's right. And you can't even recognize that's that right. you're being used right. as a tool to separate your own people. And what's interesting is Noble Drew Ali came to give you back that community, which was which was your one, nationality. What more you need? You know what yeah. I mean? And he said so himself. What What more you want? I brought you your name. Because what you realize, and this is in the Union of the Nation, they said it takes five parts for you to become. Uh, right, whole, person. whole, right, and it's that nationality and that and creed, birth, yeah, yeah, or that or birth, birthright or whatever it is, whatever it is. It's that, it's that, it's those two parts that right. are missing. Which he's saying, let me give it back to you. Yeah, and it's right. not even really anything that you have to even. I mean, all that we'll stuff. Go that you about, yeah, yeah, it's that's, still that's, all just sort of. That's even some bullshit just to, yeah. just to put it in your head to yeah. break the spell. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it yeah. really isn't even needed. Right, right. Terrible class. I don't know if you. Yeah, know you, you, yeah so we're just gonna. I figure we're over, right? Yeah, we, yeah. We just got one quick thing, and then, okay. and then that's it. Um, um, chapter one: A Matrix Unveiled and the Republic Betrayed by Edward Lee Webster. Right. Chapter one: An Account of the Word More. The term "more" has the ancient root of "mr," found in all. Moorish, Tamaran, Maru, and Amaruka, the old Moorish language of what has come to be known as Egyptian, Hebrew, and American languages respectfully. The root word MR, um, an abbreviation of Mr. and Master, 
comes from the old Moorish language or letters of M-Y-M-R-A-H, Mimra, manifestation of enlightenment or the sperm of God. Mimra or God manifested is another name for ASR, Testament ASR Asar, is the mysterious, unpronounceable name of the Lord who Moses talked with and not Jehovah or Yahweh, or the Greek word Osiris. Osiris is actually OS plus Iris, and when translated properly means bones and mouth, plus messenger's eye and to inform and to form into the messengers of God who became the word that spoke the foundation of the world into existence. The word more is the actual word found in petroglyph on Mount Moriah for the scholarly word Hebrew. The original referred to themselves as Maru or Mori. The term MR also means mountain, mound or pyramid. Therefore, Mount Moriah or mountain of the Lord means Moors of the Lord and not Hebrews or Jews. The word Amuraka, H-A-M-O-O-R-I-C-A, is the origin of the modern term America that has absolutely nothing to do with the made-up personage historically called Amerigo Vespucci. The term America is far older than the 15th century. In Time Magazine, ISBN 08129084738473, they pronounced a copy of the oldest known map of North America. The article stated that this ancient Libyan Arabic script the first century BC and in the center of the continent Nevada was the word MR and possibly being the origin of the word America. You know what I have to say and finish off on this, but in Nevada they have this place Area 51, right? Yeah. That's where supposedly the aliens right. are, right? Yeah. Right. So you notice it's in the middle of this desert. No one go goes there. Goes there. What my belief is is it is some artifact that probably heralds back to our ancient stuff, our space travel stuff. Right. Right. And how come it's in Nevada? If you think about Nevada being MR. Yeah. Right. 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 To me, right. there's some there's something that touches that, that sort of touches 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 me with that. Mm. Right. Right. I'm not allowed to see it. It's some top right. secret stuff. Yeah. Right. Yep. But like when you tie that in, and it's in the middle of the desert. Right. right to me, that's where if you were some ancient power, you might hide this stuff, bury it under the exactly. sand. Right? They found it. Yeah. They're trying to figure it out. They ain't gonna let you in on it. Right? It's like the pyramid. The pyramid's a triangle. That's right. And where everything disappears is the Bermuda Triangle. That's right. That's <laughs> and right. It's in the middle of the ocean. That's right. Where? What do you think where, makes it disappear, man? Hmm? You think? I would wonder if that place is the same place where Atlantis is. Right? Yeah, so that's what they're yeah, talking that's, about. That's, 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 that's the whole the story. story. That's, what that's the whole story. story. I don't know what's and down I there. I wonder, but like, the reason why we, everything goes over here, maybe it's because there's a gate from heaven to earth. Well, not even what that, you that, think that about it. It's a, it's a temporal here. gate where possibly what they do is energy shifts to yeah. it. Right? Yeah. They've got yeah. there that far advanced. Right, 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 right. Basically, yeah. certain planes that come across at a right. certain time. Hey. Yeah. You, you know, you're, you're, you're gone. Yeah. And you're maybe not even dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could buy this in another world or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stargate. <laughs> I, I seen like the story from this dude. You know what I mean? The yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. Well, yo, we want to say Islam to all the Moors online. We got about, we had, we had, I think, 12 at one time. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, right now we got the last 10. So Islam, we yeah. appreciate everything, yo. Um, I know, yeah, don't forget, right? Um, October. 20th, 2013, Washington, D.C. We want to see all the moors, if possible, to be there so we can um, have the turbans and fezzes in the street like Noble Jawali said is going to happen. And don't forget this Sunday, the good brother, Grand Sheik Nature L. Bay, has a Skype lecture with Canaan Land Moors called National Standards. And next week, we're going to be dealing with all you Canaan land moors, dirty moors, like to send messages and text people 70 times in the day about, about you know, that 
Kudrado L runs the temple like a pastor. We're going to see what, what <laughs> pastor is going on next week. So Islam, we're going to close out with the prayer. Mm -hmm. Five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe. A lot of Father of the Universe. Father of Love. Father of Love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night. By night. And by day. And by day. Through His Holy Prophet. Through His Holy Prophet. Prophet. Noble Drew Ali. Noble Drew Ali. Islam. Islam. Uh, Please. The computer's on in that room. Is that? Is that yeah, it was on already. Hey, yeah, where's the? Did you get the blue fez from the same spot? Yeah, same spot, yo.